Uh, later on, I'll have a video on how to use it to make terrain with a special celebrity guest. Celebrity guest. Celebrity guest. Good evening. If you've ever worked with the Source engine, odds are you've used the displacement tool. This tool makes it pretty easy to make outdoor terrain for cliffs, hills, and other things. CSGO uses the displacement tool for texture painting and making the level geometry more dynamic. Pretty cool, huh? Gold Source doesn't have this tool. Traditionally in Gold Source, Valve's methods for making terrain have been, uh, well, uh, 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 -huh. yeah, uh, uh, -huh. Yeah. Terrain in Gold Source is incredibly difficult, since they not only have to be made in brushwork, but also present a lot of challenges to optimization. If you aren't using funk details, have fun waiting 13 hours every single time your level compiles. So here's how you build your terrain in Half-Life. First, we're gonna make a rectangular brush, then use the clipping tool to slice it into two triangles. Next, hold shift and drag it to make a copy. Copy and paste until you've covered the full area you plan on mapping in triangles. Next, select them all. To make it easier to work with them, I'll put them in a group. You could do that by pressing here. Next, select the vertices you wanna move. Jackhammer makes this very easy by letting you select multiple vertices where they join, whereas the previous version of Hammer required you to select each vertex separately. Now it's as simple as moving the individual vertices where you want them to be. You can design hills, cliffs, pools with water in them, and rocks. Once you have something that looks decent, it's time to optimize. So, Valve didn't optimize anything when they made Half-Life 1 because Funk Detail didn't exist yet. As a result, pretty much every Half-Life map with any kind of creative outside geometry is pretty self-contained and basic. You, on the other hand, now have the world at your fingertips thanks to Funk Detail. You're gonna want most of your surfaces to be Funk Detail. There will be some exceptions to this rule, but for the most part, use Funk Detail. Ideally, you'll want to treat your geometry like source displacements. Add some bounding boxes to contain your level and be cautious, constantly compiling to make sure your map still works. Some people manage to go absolutely hog wild with their brush work, but unless you're a gold source guru, you should remain cautious. This engine is not as robust as you might think, and a lot of the people behind these maps have had their fair share of issues with them. In conclusion, terrain can be one of the most difficult aspects of mapping in Half-Life, but it's certainly doable if you map in a careful, non-destructive manner. Always be wary of your brush limits and use funk detail whenever you can to save your viz leaves and compile times. That's all for now, fellow gamers. Good luck and make the mountains of your dreams. Don't forget to subscribe to Richard Overtime at www. I cannot thank Dimbeak enough for graciously giving me the opportunity to feature on his awesome YouTube channel, and I will forever be thankful for my opportunity to share my voice with Eastern Europe and beyond. Good night. Wow, Richard, great job. I hope that we get more interesting Half-Life mapping tutorial videos out of you, son. So this has been Gaming Crimson. Peace out. Hey guys, what's up? Uh, I thought that Richter would have been able to handle most of that until I realized that this shit's actually uh, really complicated. So how about, you know, you and I, we work face to face. It's been a while. It's been a couple years. How you been? Great to see you. Okay, let's start mapping. So, let's walk through the steps again, because I know that you already forgot. This is kind of like that one Wendy's training video, where like you get the whole song, you know, they do the whole song, they show you all the fucking bullshit. Then, you know, you don't know shit after that. It's a song. What? Have you ever listened to a song and memorized the lyrics the first time? And so after that, you know, he walks him through the steps again. That's what I'm gonna do now because Richter did not do a good enough job. So let's get into it. Who remembers the first step? Aw, first step, guess what? We're gonna make, uh... Oh, that block looks like shit. Guess what we're gonna do with it now? We're gonna split it. Two triangles. Next up, <clears throat> I'm gonna texture it, you know? Because that's what I like to do. Uh, if you type out, there are a lot of really good exterior textures that'll pop up. You know, I'm just gonna use the classic. Alright, make sure that texture lock is off, or when you copy-paste them, it's gonna look like shit. I'm sorry that I have to be the one to tell you that your map is gonna look like shit if you do that. So here's what we're gonna do. Copy-paste, copy-paste, copy-paste. Alright, we got some. 
Let's do it again. Okay, copy paste, copy paste, copy paste. Copy paste, copy paste, Oop. copy paste, and copy paste. And I think you know, that's, a, that's a nice little arena for us. Now there's a lot of different ways that you could do this. This is probably the most basic way, and quite frankly it's a little ugly, but we'll get into some of the more advanced ways as we go along here. So, you remember, use the vertices to move them around, right? Lower those there, guess what? You got a little divot in the ground, right there. Looks beautiful. Don't forget to group them together by clicking here. And another thing that you can do, you can select a lot of them, like that, and then lower them if you want to move a large group of them down together. How about, uh, you know, we make this little basin here, lower it down further and further and further, and guess what? <laughs> guess what? You know, it looks like shit, but that's why we're gonna go in and we're gonna clean it up by moving around the vertices until it looks right. It's a lot more natural to do it in uh, Source Engine, you know, with the displacement tool, but as I've told you before and as you likely remember by now, we don't have that. Isn't that right, Dallas? Yeah. You know, it's a game of moving them around until it looks just natural enough to where you don't have to keep working it on it anymore and you can go work on something else instead. If you're ever afraid that you might have screwed something up, Alt-P, Jackie Boy tells you what your problem is. So far, we don't really have any problems with the geometry, so I'm gonna keep going. And I'm going to just keep on going and I'm never gonna stop. I hope you're taking notes, by the way. Victim, victim of the moon. Victims laugh and victims cry, victims live and victims die, what? Oh yeah, by the way, uh, since I've got you hostage while I work on making this, oh my god, how did I do that? While I work on making these uh, hills look a little bit more natural, um, I, I've been doing some music for Richter. I did the uh, peer pressure theme, and I did the uh, I did Victim of the Moon. Uh, that wasn't originally made for his channel, so the genius page, <laughs> not so genius, I'm afraid. You'll notice it's a very time-consuming process where you put in a lot of work and get uh, not a whole lot of results. This is why I have not been mapping for two years. And you know what? Doesn't look the best. Doesn't look too great. So that's why uh, I'm just going to just what we need in this world. Another lake. Another fucking lake. And you know what? I actually think I did a decent enough job. You know, like uh, obviously this part could go a little lower to make it look more uh, natural. So I'm going to do that. You know, you got to make it look a little random, but not too random. Because if it's too random, then uh, it sucks. <laughs> it's just like the worst shit you've ever seen in your life, you know? And you know, I, I would call this random enough for gold source. How about some cliffs? I can make you guys some cliffs if you guys want to see that shit. You'll freak out. I'm just going to make a cliff wall. I guess it's over here. You know what? I'm going to... This time I'm going to use a different technique for the triangles, because the technique I've been using, the results are okay. But there's a better way to do it sometimes. And check out this screen right here. I'm going to flip them horizontally. Now you might be asking, you know, what the hell have you done? What are you doing? Holy shit. Flip vertically. What this does is make the triangles uh, look... You know, sometimes you can get a diff better shapes out of them, different shapes. If you use this method, you can do all kinds of different combinations of triangles. And we're going to take a look at some of those when we get to the advanced sections. And, you know what, let's get those uh, rock wall textures. These rock walls, I think they look fine. Like, I, I kind of grew up playing Half-Life with these rock wall textures, but Richter, he hates this shit. He thinks, uh, he thinks that these walls suck. You know, one fun thing that we can do is we can take this top row and put a little bit of a slant to it like this. No errors, great. What that does is it puts a slant to it, you know? It's pretty self-explanatory, really. I'm gonna make them not so perfect anymore, Little Miss Perfect. And you know, now we've got, uh, you know, all this misshapen stuff. No invalid solid errors, great. So how about these ones? Let's screw around with them. 
Sure, my mapping's a little messy. Sure, this isn't exactly how you should do it all the time, but you know what? If you don't fail, it means you probably never even stood for anything to begin with. Kinda rocky. You know, it's, it's looking a little goofy. I think I want to start playing around with this level a little, little more just to make it feel more like, you know, jagged rocks poking out. You might notice I'm just selecting at random and just sliding things on a grid and praying that it works. And you know what? Sometimes prayer uh, gets results. So we got some rocks now. Isn't that uh, neat? You know, you can show it to your grandma. I'm sure that she'll like your map. So let's get on to optimizing. Alright, I'm gonna be real slapdash with this. I'm gonna make the ugliest map you've ever seen in your life. How's Street Fighter, Dallas? How you doing? Alright. Oh, you're playing Tekken? Oh my god. Alright, we got our walls. Let's put the skybox in. I'm gonna use the null texture. Um, for the, the floors and the walls that you can't see. The reason I'm doing that is because it doesn't render any polygons, but it still serves the same function as a regular wall. So it'll still, you know, block off for viz and, you know, all that. And it's still solid, it just doesn't render any faces, so it saves you polygons. And I'm gonna turn the detail level on this rock wall here, after I make it a funk detail, to level 2. And the floor here, usually I wouldn't make something this big into one gigantic funk detail, but in this instance, you're gonna want to moderately break them up so that, you know, it's not always rendering every single face all the time. And you know, it, uh, it works. You know, it doesn't look, uh, spectacular or anything, but, you know, if you want it to look spectacular, then, uh, you know, you're gonna want to really use Admir's tutorial. So I want to dedicate this section to talk about the work of one of my colleagues, Admir456. Um, this is an incredible tutorial that he made on the whole Half-Life on advanced terrain creation And what I love about this tutorial is how comprehensive it is He's also a youtuber and he makes a lot of content on Half-Life 1 modding specifically content that is focused around coding He says he's inspired by my content which is really flattering and I'm glad that he was not inspired by my laziness as well Now what's great about this tutorial is that if there's any kind of terrain anything from roads to cliffs to canyons to caves to Shit. <laughs> yeah, there's there's a lot of content in here, and it's all really good content. Uh, I recommend that you check it out if you want to get into more advanced terrain creation. If you want your terrain to just stay, like, mediocre, I guess my video is gonna have to do. Alright, so obviously, we got a lot to talk about. I've been missing for what? Two years? Yeah, like, like you guys missed me. Yeah, like I matter to you. Well, hopefully you guys like this tutorial anyways, and if you didn't, then hopefully you're gonna like Freeman's Mind Jeopardy. Goodbye.